Hi guys, this is OCD Live. I'm Ali Grayman. So this is part two from the previous show because again the show was uh, run running too long and uh, I needed to split it into two days. So another question I have is very similar to the question I kind of already answered about uh, reading books specifically to get reassurances so such as like palmistry, horoscopes, things like that to try to figure out if the thought is true. If you're doing anything, anything at all, reading books, watching shows, um, trying to figure it out in any way, then this is bad and this is something that does need to be avoided. This is not the same as OCD avoidance. You're avoiding behavior that is not natural. You shouldn't be trying to find and solve things in this way that are already not true, you know? It's like, it, it just, it doesn't make sense, right? So, but in the moment, it feels like it's very important. So yes, you do have to stop yourself from doing these things because it will make your OCD worse. So another question I have is about functioning during ERP. So this is the same uh, person who was asking the question about the um, sleeping and, and hearing noises, I believe. So just uh, so it's kind of connected to that question as well. Um, when you do, exp uh, and the person is asking, what, how do you function when you do the ERP exposure and response prevention? Because it, it is very difficult to go through. I would say that... Um, Basically, you function the best you can. You're already exposed to the thoughts. So there's not much you can do that's going to make your OCD higher. You know, even when you do, when you do ERP, it's going to make it higher for a little while, but then it's going to calm down. Um, for sleeping specifically, um, what you want to do is you want to have the noise and then you want to uh, sleep as if you know, everything is fine to the best of your ability. And some days it will work better and some days it will work worse, but you will start to improve. Don't push yourself too hard on the ERP. If you feel like you can't function in your normal life, you have to scale it back because, you know, exposure and response is a good recovery system. But at the same time, it's you're racing against yourself, you know. So you don't need to go at the highest speed possible and put the rest of your life on hold. Do a little bit at each night. So not full night of listening to the noise, but say you're only listening to the noise for uh, 15 minutes a night. And then after that, you, you do what you normally do. You can't get away from OCD entirely right now because you're in the process of recovery. But don't push yourself too hard with ERP. You know, you're still, if you're doing ERP every day, you're still going to get there, you know. So some days you might be kind of more adventurous and more willing to go for it. You might have less on your plate otherwise, you know, you, you might be more available to do ERP. And some days your your life is already very full, you know, you can't handle ERP. So don't do ERP that day, you know. So it's a balance of recovery, you know what I mean? Like when, when can you do more, when can you do less, but... It's important to that you do at least some. Also for the sleep thing, I would recommend doing meditation as well. Um, any guided meditation will be fine. And guided meditations often have noise as well. So that might be an exposure for you as well. So, you know, you have to expose yourself to what's scaring you and then you will see that there's nothing there behind it. So the next question I have is about, then it's from the same person as well. So when you label a problem as OCD, um, it can be difficult, obviously, because you still get a lot of anxiety, especially when you're refusing to pay attention. And does that anxiety go away over time? So do you habituate to it? And yes, you do habituate to it because the more you refuse to pay attention, the more your brain sees that the situation is not real and it's not causing you any problem and then it goes away. And in the second part of the question, the person is asking me, how is this different from when a person is actually living through a traumatic event and um, is disregarding the thoughts and kind of, and this is a very, very dangerous to road of going down, you know, in terms of trying to compare realistic threats versus OCD threats and what kind of threat do I have and I'm doing this for reassurance because this is reassurance at a highest form, you know, and what you're doing is trying to make sure you're safe. And when you're trying to make sure you're safe, you're basically telling your brain that currently you're not safe, you're trying to get safe, and that's why you're getting reassurance. So guess what? When you answer, when I don't want to even answer the second part of the question because it's going to give you more anxiety, you know, in the long run. It's it, the more you try to solve um, OCD thoughts, the worse they will be. And this goes for not just this specific question, but for any type of OCD reassurance. Anybody who's doing reassurance, which is everybody who has OCD really, who's in the process of recovery, right? Before they kind of stop, stop seeking reassurance, right? 
Um, and your reassurance is making you worse. You know, it doesn't matter if it's coming from your own mind, from this show, from um, asking people, from whatever, you know. Reassurance makes the brain think that you are in danger. That's going to bring more thoughts. So that quest for trying to figure out if the thought is OCD or not, which is the quest we've all been on as we've recovered from OCD. Like I was on that quest for years um, before I figured out it wasn't working. So you first of all, you will never know 100% the truth because the feelings are always going to cloud it. And the feelings are always going to find a loophole to make you say, Oh, no, 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 but that doesn't count. Or no, no, but what, what about this? Well, what about that little detail and things like that? So you're never going to get that reassurance 100%. And that quest for reassurance makes the brain think that there is danger here. So it's very important for you to refuse this kind of reassurance, you know. Don't try to solve if is this thought an OCD thought. Just label it as OCD refuse to pay attention to the feelings even though the feelings are screaming at you to pay attention to them refuse to pay attention to them and move on you know the best you can and again distraction really helps so the feelings are on one side of the road going one way you are on the other side of the road going another way they're parallel they're, you're not crossing with the feelings they're doing whatever they're screaming they're saying pay attention this is important life or death blah 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 you're just going down the road you're not paying attention you have things you need to do today, you need to, well, like, like how we were saying, like in, in the first part of the question, right? You want to work out, you want to go do this, you want to go do that. This is what you want to do. What your feelings are screaming at you in the background are is irrelevant, you know? And having that, cho like, a, like choosing to do that, you know? Because you're going to feel like you need to answer them, like you need to do all this. But choosing to refuse, you know, and that choice does not require proof. You're just choosing to refuse. You're, you're choosing not to pay attention and you're going through your day like that very strongly um, with, with that kind of mindset and that determination as much as you can, you know, and some days are going to be better than others. Um, but if you have that kind of mindset from the very kind of beginning of the day, you will have a lot of success and you will recover. And once you recover, you do get that uh, reassurance anyway because you see that, oh, that was all for nothing, you know. But when you're in the middle of it, you will never get that reassurance. The feelings first have to go away. And for them to go away, you have to refuse to pay attention to them right when they're at their peak, you know. And then once they go away, then it's like, you know, why was I even worried about it, you know. So, but, so it's kind of like the recovery process is, is backwards a little bit, like it seems backwards, but it's, you know, it, it really does work. And also kind of uh, with the same kind of thing is that um, a lot of the times I'll hear the person say, well, I've been doing it for three, four, five, six days and I'm not feeling better or I'm feeling a little bit better. Well, yeah, because you've been doing it the wrong way for years, right? So, you know, it, it, you have to kind of have some patience and some understanding that it does take a lot of, not a lot of time, but it does take some time, you know. So if you're not, if you're feeling worse, then you're doing something wrong. But like in terms of reassurance, like you were doing reassurance yesterday, or unless there's like a, like a special circumstance where you had a lot of stress in your life and something really kind of, you know, pretty crazy happened and that caused OCD. But most of the time it's because you were doing reassurance. But if you're feeling the same or just slightly better, that's fine. That's the road on the, like that's the recovery road. You're just you know you just have to have patience and just keep going and keep going. It's little wins every day create recovery, you know, because every time you send a, a signal to your mind, which is pretty much every second, right? If not every nanosecond, right? What is that signal? Is that signal of fear or is that signal of I'm in control, this is OCD, I'm not paying attention? You know, that's how you recover. Those signals add up and if they add up to fear, then you're getting worse. If they add up to I don't care, this is OCD, then you get better. So the next question I have is the person is worried about getting hepatitis C from um, a drugstore, like trying on lipstick and or lip liner and things like that. Um, and the thoughts are just spiraling and the person asking, what, what should I do? Should I start medications or deal with it myself? With the med in terms of medications, um, as, as you know, guys, I'm obviously not a doctor. 
um, and proud of it. Um, but in, if it was me, I wouldn't do medication unless uh, you're in a situation where your anxiety is so high that you absolutely cannot make progress. You know, so if you feel like, okay, I'm trying to do uh, exposures and all of that. But see, when you do exposures, you, you guys can listen to my other videos on exposure specifically for more information. But basically, when you do exposure, it's exposure and response prevention. That's what ERP is. If you're doing exposure, but you're not doing response prevention, meaning you're responding with fear, you're not preventing the response of fear uh, and anxiety and, you know, reassurance and all of that right, then you're not really making yourself better. The exposure doesn't really count, you know. So it's it's exposure and response. If you feel like you cannot do it and it's, you know, like you're trying and trying for weeks on end and it's like you're not making any progress. When I say any, I mean like any, right. Um, then I would probably, like if it was me again, again, I'm not a doctor, but if it was me, I would, you know, consider taking medication um, for a short amount of time, just until I get my anxiety a little bit lower. But the focus needs to be on the recovery work, not on medication. And using medication as a temporary band-aid tool to help you progress further, because that's what it's there for, right? And it can be very effective, the combination of the two. But it's, it's a problem when the person is thinking that their whole recovery depends on medication because maybe their doctor told them so. Um, and some doctors are very comfortable with saying, yeah, you can be on medication for your entire life and that's fine. You know, well, that's not fine in my book, you know. So, and I can tell you from many clients who recover, you know, without any medication at all that, yeah, it's definitely doable and obviously myself as well, right? Um, and then, you know, for me, like I was using medication for a while, but um, what happened is that when you, and this is a story that I hear a lot, and again, it's kind of sidetracking from the question a little bit, but it's important to know that if you start taking medication and then you feel the anxiety is um, lower, but not that much lower, and then the doctor will a lot of the time, if not most of the time, suggest a higher dose, and then you start taking higher dose and it's still not going away and then even higher dose and you get to a point where you're taking the maximum you max out the medication where well it's not recommended to take any more than that and then you get onto like antipsychotics or some other type of medication that's even more kind of um severe you know so it's you know, it's a slippery slope with it. So, and this happened to me when I was specifically relying on only medication and only to for recovery. Um, but when I started to actually do the work and stop reassurance that I was getting constantly, like in my own uh, OCD recovery, right? Um, then things started to improve rather quickly, right? Which I didn't see with medication. So, you know, if you feel like you need it, use it as a tool, but uh, but really you're, it, it should be like 10 versus 90%. Like 90% of your focus should be on recovery work, exposures, and response prevention. So for example, like in your situation, right, you're exposed to, uh, at, at a drugstore, you tried on lipstick or whatever, and you're exposed to the thought of hepatitis C. Well, what if I got hepatitis C? I have to get checked. What well, this my whole world is over. That's exposure. And, ex and exposure brings in anxiety. But the response should be, this is OCD. I'm not paying attention. I'm not going to get checked. This is a normal situation. There's no need to do anything special. I'm moving on. And then if you do this in a few days, you'll feel better. It does it, probably, like if you're still worried about this, because I know you sent this to me a little while ago, um, that it, it will take a few days because you're kind of like um, been paying attention to it for so long, not so long, but a, long, a few days, right? That um, it takes a few days for it to go away as well. So, but it's, it's, it's just, you know, about just step by step, minute by minute, not paying attention. And then this means that minute by minute, you're training your brain that this thought is not important. And then when you have a similar thought that comes, because um, usually the brain will try to replace one thought with another thought, um, to maintain the level of anxiety. So maybe it wasn't this time uh, at the drugstore, maybe it was some other time, or maybe it was some other situation or some other illness or whatever. Again, it's all OCD. I'm not paying attention. Anything to do with contamination and getting um, um, sick with something, 
is OCD and unless you actually have you know some sort of a test prove that it is you know in real life and you have no doubt that it's OCD everything that you doubt as OCD it's OCD I'm not paying attention you know so going about it like this specifically whether you should take medication or not um, in your particular case um, it, it's hard for me to say you know because I you know it's I mean you know like I don't know you know how bad you're feeling right like what is your level of anxiety I think that honestly um, try to try to deal without it um, as much as you possibly can if you feel like you're not making any more progress then you can see your doctor and ask them about it you know it's and it's not a life sentence you know either you know you you, you start taking medication you don't like the side effects you you don't like how it's making you feel you know go back to your doctor say I don't want to take it anymore and wean off of it you know it's it's not something where if you make the decision, you have to stick to it forever, you know. So I believe these are all the questions that I have for today. If I missed yours, please resubmit again and I will uh, answer them next week for sure because sometimes questions do kind of get lost in, in all the general emails. If you need more help, if you have any questions, please email me to info at youhaveocd.com. You can also visit youhaveocd.com for more information. There you will find one-on-one -on -one recovery program with me. There's also ebooks available. There's a lot of articles there as well, so please check that out. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video if you do like it. And I will see you next week.